Hi, um, Mr. Townsend here again. Uh, in this video, I'm just going to look at a couple of amino acids, uh, two simplest amino acids, and we'll look at what their name is. And uh, specifically, I'm going to go over how do we identify optical isomers. Okay, so they're a type of stereoisomer, just like geometric isomers are stereoisomers, but uh, these specific ones are optical isomers. So the two uh, amino acids that we want to look at, well, first we want to see what an amino acid is. So an amino acid is a, a compound that has two functional groups attached to, uh, to it, to this carbon here, right? So it has this carboxylic acid here, and it has the amine group here. And then this group here called R1 and this called R2 could be any different chain of different compounds. And because of that, you can have a whole series of different amino acids. Um, so there are in fact like 20 amino acids that humans need to make the proteins in their body. Now what actually happens is each one of these um, acid uh, molecules connects, so this NH2 end makes a connection, a peptide bond with the OH end, or the carboxylic acid end, and it makes a chain of these, and a chain of these uh, amino acids, a combination, makes a specific protein in their body that does specific things in their body. So they're really important for um, biological chemistry. Um, the, each one has its own name. Um, we could give it a systematic name, so, um, but we have two specific names that we have for the simplest one. The two, the simplest one is called glycine, and the, and the second most simplest is called alanine. And they look like this. So this is glycine. Um, if we wanted to name it, it has two carbons here, so it's uh, in a chain, so this is going to be ethanoic acid, so it's going to be 2-amino-ethanoic acid, but it's commonly just called glycine. The second one here is uh, has a the R group, R2 group off the bottom here, or R1 is a CH3, but so what it really has here is it has three carbons in one chain, has the amine group come off the second carbon, so this is called 2 amino propanoic acid. However, it also has just a common name, which is alanine. So if we look at alanine, alanine is a specific example of what we call an, uh, that can form an optical isomer. Now the reason that's true is in the center here, this carbon has four different groups of molecules, whether it's an atom or, or a group, they're all different. So it means that it can form optical isomer. Now optical isomers, um, if you have these four different substituents, the carbon in the middle is called a chiral carbon. And because of that, because of this chiral carbon here, this carbon in the middle, we can have this type of molecule where we have, uh, because we have this tetrahedral shape, um, and this is like a pyramid with a line off the top, we have this tetrahedral shape, these 109 degree angles, I have a bond coming out the front here, I have one going out the back to the carboxylic acid group, I have one to the side for the amine and one up for hydrogen. Because of those, I can make a reflection of this. So this is the reflected image. These two are actually two slightly different molecules. They are um, enantiomers, they're called, uh, enantiomers, but they are mirror images of each other. Just like your left and right hand are mirror images of each other, but they are not the same. You cannot place your left hand on top of your right hand. You cannot place this molecule to take up the same space as that, although they look similar. Okay, so here's a, an example using some um, an, an atom diagram, sorry, atom model here. So we've got our different uh, groups with uh, different colors and different sized uh, spheres. Now you can see that they, this is a mirror image of this one. It looks exactly the same. We've got an S and an R image here. We can't put them on top of each other. Now that is what makes them an optical isomer. When we take this S one, and I try and put the R one in the same place, right? So here what I've done is I put this brown group at the top, the light group, green group here, and the blue one, and, and the, as soon as I put those two there, these two are on opposite sides. They cannot take up the same space, okay? So they are optical isomers. Now it so happens that biological systems are specifically um, attuned 
to one of these types of isomers. So one of these types of isomers, if you were to take a medicine, let's say I took paracetamol, then one of the versions of paracetamol would work well, the other one might um, kill my kidneys. So when they first made paracetamol, they got some very uh, dangerous versions. So they got a mixture of it and people would take the painkiller, but then they'd have kidney problems. They worked out that it was just one of the isomers that caused the problem. The other one worked fine. So you try and make just one particular version of it. So how do you identify the difference between uh, a sample of a left-handed or right-handed isomer? You basically shine it through um, what we call uh, a filter. Okay, so we have polar light. Now light is uh, light is like a wave that you might see coming towards you in the beach. It, it, it in a way that it, it has a wave form now, but the waves go up and down or they go sideways like a snake, like a um, if you can see a snake uh, sliding along the desert, it can go that way or it can go up and down. It can go in all different angles. If you put it through the filter and you make and you only choose a light that's going straight up and down, if you shine that light through one of the isomers, so a solution of it, let's say it's a solution dissolved, uh, this is dissolved in a solution, when you shine the light through there, it will turn this polarized light that's only going up and down slightly to one side, maybe to the left. If you use the other enantiomer, it turns it to the right. So we can use, we can say that a pure mixture, mixture of one of the enantiomers will rotate the polarized light in an opposite direction to its optical isomer, to its opposite. Okay. 